Hi, and welcome to the Vintage Computer Federation YouTube channel. Your support helps us with creating videos just like this one and restoring vintage computers for all the world to enjoy. So please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. So hello everybody, my name is Logan. I am from Central Valley in California. Uh, I'm currently 18 years old and uh, I, a little bit about me is I was always an interested kid in electronics. Um, I'd always cut power cords off of things and you know experiment with them. Um, this was me when I was maybe six or seven. Um, I always loved to make things and craft and um, I would always make like little cardboard gadgets and stuff like that uh, for fun. Uh, so where my story starts with electronics is um, in middle school, I went to a school called Rio Vista. Um, and this was kind of basically how the school looked. Um, this was our library uh, that we had. And so the way I got interested in electronics, like specifically Apple technology, from back then was um, I had a friend named Alex and he uh, we were I don't, I don't remember anymore but he was talking about there was some old Mac computer in, in the in the library and so this is you know like I said what the library looked like um, and so we like found an old Macintosh you know on one of the shelves and our librarian owned it and she sh she said that she had bought it in like 1984 or so and it has it had it ever since um, horrible it was super ugly condition but be that as it may. Uh, and so uh, I got super fascinated with it, wanted to know more about it. Uh, so I researched into old Apple history and you know when this came out and I found like, that was a photo of it there. Um, can't believe I still have that. But uh, this was about 20, 2018, 2019 or so, I was about 14. Um, and so basically I researched about it and then, of course, I had to do a little artsy photo with it. Um, but uh, that was the Apple II, and the Apple II was before the Macintosh, and I instantly fell in love with it. Um, and uh, I wanted to get more, and, you know, finally see if I could buy one maybe, you know. Um, and so uh, basically I found out that these were the motherboards for the Apple IIs. Um, and this was about, you know, the Apple II was released in 1977. Um, and of course, me being myself, I hadn't seen anything so old, you know, and uh, it just amazed me to, to look at. And so um, I wanted to know, like, well, how, the, how the electronics worked, you know, how things, they all intercommunicated, you know. Um, and so I found a page online, which is the Apple II Enthusiast Group on Facebook. Um, this is an old photo, but they probably have about, 13 to 15,000 members now. Um, and it's all just people that love the Apple II, pretty much. And that, that's what makes it great a great community because everyone helps each other out. Um, and so then I wondered if I could build one myself. And so this was a page I found online written by Mike Willigal, who's quite known in the community uh, for making replica boards of you know the early Apple computers. And so what I found out was that Mike made a Revision Zero replica many years back, and then he posted all the designs for it online so people could take one and build them build, you know, themselves. And so I decided to take on this very tasking uh, job for it ever being my first electronics project. Um, and so I got a parts list together. I sourced it all out. I ended up finding some parts sellers online that were still around after all this time that had parts. Uh, and then I ordered my first boards um, from China. This was about early, early 2019. And then um, pretty much just, you know, had an ultimate fascination with it. And so I ended up building one on my carpet floor for my bedroom at, back then. Um, Obviously, you have to start somewhere, and I guess that was my bedroom floor. Um, so I built one, and this this was, I want to say, May 2019. Uh, soldered on my floor. Obviously, there was some burn marks on the carpet, but uh, the house didn't burn down, so that's what matters. So that was after I finished it, 
Uh, I posted to the Apple II group um, that I did it, and a lot of people didn't think I could do it for the first time, but I showed them wrong. Um, and it obviously didn't work initially at first, but I got it working with a friend of mine, Adrian Chad, who I met that has been like my right-hand guy for everything. Uh, and he's helped me out a lot with learning about electronics. And so this is the board here. I've kept it ever since, but it um, still lives on. Haven't, haven't trashed it. Uh, and then people will be able to look, look at it at my table once, once I'm done with it here. Um, so that was it running uh, Oregon Trail, which is a pretty popular game for the Apple II. Um, and a lot of people know about it. Uh, those are some more close-up photos of it for anyone that wants to get a closer look at it. Um, but yeah, so I got a lot of like detailed photos of it, of course. And then this was, this was the first time I went to VCF. This was 2019 in August. Uh, I brought my Revision Zero board and I brought an Apple II board that I, the an original Apple II board that I had brought because I owned I got my first Apple II in August of 2018, and I fell in love with it. And these are photos from the event, you know, more or less, these are, these are just my photos of like, you know, experiences and what I saw. And these are all the Apple ones that they brought to the show. Um, that's in a, a real Apple one there. Uh, there's a lot of people that I met. There's me back there in the corner, if you can see me there on the far right. Um, and then uh, met a lot of people and it was really fun. And then I met Lee Felsenstein as well. That was uh, very cool. Um, and that was my first award that I got uh, for best replica. Still have that. Um, and then this is photos of uh, the, a Pac-Man arcade game. Because uh, I knew that electronics couldn't be different between home computers and you know Atari machines and such like that. And turns out they weren't. So I built one of those and got experience of how to work with electronics more. And then uh, that was the control panel for it that I built myself. Well, I rolled, I restored it, but you know, got an original one. I've done a lot of things, things like that. That was when I uh, got the game up and running. But the cool story about this is that with old, you know, arcade machines, they have glass tube, you know, uh, CRT machines in them, and so it's me in Fresno, California, it's really hard to find that kind of stuff because nobody, you know, has that anymore. Um, and so what I did, the way I did this was, is I went on eBay, which has a lot of interesting stuff that people sell on there. And um, I basically got like the metal frame for the tube and then I got the electronics that power it. And then I basically went to like my local TV recycler place, bought a TV set and took all the guts out and put the tube in the set with with the frame and everything and sure enough it worked um, and that's that's what that photo is depicting there uh, that was probably my, my, my best uh, best build I did um, I think I need to go to the other photos here yeah here we go there we go. Okay, so this photo is of another Apple II board, uh, and this is a Revision 7 board. This is a Revision 0 board. And so this Revision 7 board is a project I did in 2020 um, that basically I took apart an original board, and that's a photo of it there. And so uh, basically I just disassembled it. I sent it to a company in Santa Barbara that focuses on like re-engineering printed circuit boards and they basically digitally scanned it and then relayed it all out by hand. Wonderful guys. Uh, shout out to Peter at I Sensor Tech. Uh, and so basically fantastic work. Um, and I basically got it all flat and then I mailed it to them. And then that was when they digitally recreated it. Um, it was truly amazing. Um, and that was when I got the first run of boards from China. Obviously in China everything's five times as cheaper, but here in the US it's a lot more expensive. Um, and so basically that was, this was the day I got it running. Uh, it didn't, had some issues still, but the main point was that I got it to work with a lot of help from friends. Um, and so that was when it was all done and ready to go. And I had this board demonstrating at last year's VCF West. Um, 
And this board's on display right now at, uh, at my table if you guys are interested in checking that out. Uh, running some Pac-Man games on it and such. And then that was my, this was my demo from last year as well. My table kind of looks the same a little bit. Um, in 2021, VCF West was the biggest year for me, uh, mainly because of the people I met. Um, that was me again. Um, there's some people there. And so this is Liza Loop's uh, exhibit that she had. Um, the person in the plaid shirt is Jonah, her son, and his wife is on the left. And then that's Bobby Livingston behind Jonah there. So Liza is the, is the person that owns the first commercially sold Apple One. And Steve Wozniak gave her the Apple One pretty much uh, when she was at the Homebrew Computer Club. And he wanted to give it to her so she could bring it into schools. And so she, I guess, still has it all this time. And she brought it there and was showing it. And she had her keyboards and stuff like that. Um, now it's on display this year as well. You guys have probably seen. Um, and then the really cool part about this was that I got to take photos of it um, and get really good close-ups. That was when she was speaking uh, last year about it. Uh, and of course, I got to get a photo of it myself. Really amazing. My best year ever. Um, I got a lot of close-ups with it. Uh, and then this is her Apple II, which Steve Wozniak gave her as well, which basically he gave, her to, he gave to her to replace the Apple I because the Apple I didn't work very efficiently. Um, and so I got a lot of close-ups of that, a lot of close-up of parts and stuff like that. And that was, so this is my friend, my friend Kevin. These were his parts that he gave me for an Apple I. These are Apple I replicas that are close, but they could be closer. Um, People in the community have made all these replicas and they've done it all by hand, laid it all out, and it's truly a work of art for sure. Uh, these are replicas that people built that I saw. Uh, this was a customer that um, built one of my boards and they, they wanted to do a custom black one, which looked really nice. Uh, and these are a lot of other exhibits that people had and Ataris and stuff like that. That's me and Dan Kotke, he was the Apple employee. Um, He'll be here this. He'll be here this year too. And then that was my Rev Seven board that I took a photo with him. And of course, I had to get it signed, of course. Um, and so, definitely my best year. Uh, and then lastly, here are my last set of photos. I think we're good here. So then, after I met Liza Loop, um, she wanted me to come check out her collection. Um, and I was totally willing. So the, these photos are from that, that event. This is a pretty big event for me, too, because, you know, she lives in, up in the wine country, so it was cool to see all of that. So these are some photos of her Apple II and stuff like that that I got restored for her. Um, and it's definitely cool when you're, like, the only person doing it because you feel like it's your thing, you know? Um, so I have a lot of photos of that. And then I have some parts that she showed me and a lot of her, we talked a lot, shared a lot of stories. That's, that's where all the parts are, her sheds and stuff like that. She has a lot of stuff that she definitely needs the help for because there's a lot of historical documents such like she even has like a sign-in sheet with Steve Wozniak's name on it. Um, that's pretty valuable. She's got a bunch of Saul computers, Commodores, I mean just you can name it. And then these are the computers that I restored with her while I was there and cleaned up. Everything with a tag or a bag on it was all worked on by me um, and pretty much worked on quite a few units and TV sets. This was a photo of an email from Jerry Manick who worked on the original Apple II case. And I talked to him a lot about trying to see how much injection molding these days costs. And it's pretty close to the price it was then, a little bit cheaper. But uh, a lot of photos like this I have saved of people I've met or talked with. Um, and I think that's the last of my photos. Um, that's pretty much up to current now, yeah. And then any other questions you guys can ask me now or at my table, so I'm open for questions now. Anyone? No? Sure. Uh, I like how much it uh, speaks about Waz and his creativity. Um, it definitely blew everybody out of the park when it initially came out, in my opinion. Um, it, it definitely was better than anything you could get before. Um, and Waz was definitely 
the person who tried his best to make it how he would have wanted it, if that makes sense. But yeah, you had a question over there? It's a little hard to hear you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I apologize, I didn't speak about that. Uh, I'm selling all these replicas. Uh, I'm selling my Revision 7 boards now, uh, and then I have my Apple Ones that I sell as well. Um, and I also have, uh, I've even had some customers that came to me and you know were interested in buying a board, and now they're like my right-hand person because they're like, you know, I believe in what you're doing, and I think it's cool that someone your age is definitely doing this type of stuff. Um, I hear that a lot, and it's kind of, it's a shocker because, you know, it's true, but I'll, then again, like a lot of this stuff's 45 plus years old, and a lot of people that were even born around it, you know, no, remember it. But you know, nine times out of ten, somebody my age has no idea what I'm talking about, you know. But uh, yeah, any other questions? All good. Cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>